song you walked up to is our theme song, and you sang it for us, and we were there shooting the video, and you were so wonderful, yeah. and it was hot in the room. I yes. don't know if you remember that. Thank <laughs> you so much for that. It was brutal. I got stuck in the elevator, I remember. Yeah, that right. was, it was really a horrendous day for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great day for us. So, you know, yeah, we, we were there. Yes. yes. Yeah, we fun. had fun. Um, you know, one hot topic last week, we were talking about people on social media who were trying to pit Cardi B and Nicki Minaj against each other. You're obviously incredibly influential legends in the music industry. Mm. What's your take on people trying to pit women against each other in that industry? Um, I think it's negative because we've suffered enough um, mm. just amongst you know a male dominated society, male dominated business, and we suffered enough enough amongst each other. Mm -hmm. So you know when you see us trying to do something, at least try to bring us together, like at least try to lift us up together. Yeah. And I think that it's best that we you know continue to lift each lift each other up. It's enough everything for everyone. So yeah. why can't? Cardi, you didn't win the, the Grammy Best, you know, Hip Hop Grammy of the Year. Yeah. You know, and why can't, I mean, why can't she, you know, so it's enough for everyone. You know? Why can't she have a moment? Yeah, why can't she have a moment? Well, Bertie's told us that you've got some new music coming out. Yeah. We're yeah. very yeah. excited about that. Yeah. And the music is so inspirational and it's powerful and, and your love for women and to your point of like building each other up, that came well before you became famous. Where did where did that passion come from? Well, that passion came from growing up in an environment where I saw women treated horribly. When I was a kid, I saw women just, I just saw so many bad things. And I lived in a project, so the ne next door you can hear everyone arguing, hear every, everyone fighting. And I used to hear this woman just screaming for her life. And I used to walk outside and see women being beaten. And, you know, my mom was, you know, you know touched by that as well. And I just, you know, as a kid, I was like, I, I can't, I don't, I don't want to ever see another woman hurt again. Mm -hmm. And then I grew up and became the woman that was abused and became the woman that was hurt. So I guess, you, you know, in order to teach or um, in inspire someone, you have to become the thing so they can see you come out of it. Yeah. So that, you know, I, it, I, I had to, I, because of my environment, I had to be, I became that battered woman or that woman that didn't care yeah. about herself. I became that woman. Mm -hmm. And then I grew. You know, good for you. And look at you time. now. Look at you yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, so I guess you're happy to have celebrated a birthday. Yeah. What was it? Last month. Happy belated birthday Thank you. to you. Thank you. Yes. I don't know the number. I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> So, but you took a trip with your girlfriends and you posted these pictures along with the caption, I know. <laughs> living my best, uh, yes. my best bleeping life. <laughs> Look at you. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, I don't know how old you are, but they said, the, the, the producers told me to say uh, that women in their 40s are in their prime. So I'm assuming you're somewhere in there. Is that it? I'm definitely in my prime right now. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I was afraid to wear a bathing suit. I was running around with nothing but bathing suits and cowboys. We were in Lost Cowboys, by the mm -hmm. way. And it was me and like 15 of my girlfriends, and we had a uh, blast. We turned upside down. We was like, <laughs> not laughing. And we, we was like, just wear your bathing suits and enjoy your life. And I, yeah. I did. Yeah. And I'm, I'm enjoying my life. Freedom, you know? Last year, <laughs> yes, you should. Last yeah. year, you had a great birthday, too. You finally got your star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yes. Now, you've been around a long time, yes. and you're an icon. We all know that. Yeah. <laughs> People really respond to you. Did, did that mean a lot to you to get that? To get that it took too long to get that star. Yes, and at, at that moment, it meant a lot to me because I was going through a lot. I was coming through a horrible divorce, and at that moment, it meant a lot to get rewarded for just a lot of hard work and suffering and suffering in front of the whole world and, yeah. you know, and suffering in silence and behind closed doors and but working really, really hard and saying, someone saying, you deserve this Hollywood um, star, yeah. you, know, you know, this star walk of, walk of fame star. So, yeah, it meant a lot, meant a lot yes. Congratulations. And Thank I, you. I love seeing your acting career. Um, we were talking about it backstage. You're playing an assassin named Cha Cha. Yes. Which is my childhood nickname, actually, in your new show, The Umbrella Academy on Netflix. I love this series. Um, please tell everyone what it's about because it's like superhero and a little bit of like Harry Potter. It's so good. Well, it, what it's about is about these 43 women who get pregnant all over the world, like these random women. They just. It's like sitting here, we just get pregnant. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
somewhere. I didn't think you yeah. signed on the show you were going to get pregnant. <laughs> well, you get pregnant on the spot and you have the baby on the spot, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 43 okay. women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so wow. um, Sir, Reginald Har uh, Sir Reginald Hargreaves, who was an illustrator, mm -hmm. a billionaire il illustrator, he, yeah. he adopts seven of them. And he adopts them to perform to um, form this uh, organization called the Umbrella Academy, and they're going to save the world from the apocalypse. They, yeah. he, he raises them, and at some point, you know, when they become teenagers, they all separate and go their separate, separate ways. And then he dies, and then they come back mm -hmm. to find out who, who killed them. And so we come in to look for one of them, that's one of us, who was a time traveling assassin who escaped the job. And we come, and he comes back as a young person, and we come back as young people <laughs> yeah. trying to kill him. Trying to get so out. Our job is to assassinate. Mm. So, so Cha Cha, let me explain to you Cha Cha is. Cha Cha is a murderer with no conscience. She doesn't care about life, death, nothing, but just murdering people. And that's what but my, she, my character But she's kind of funny too. And she's funny, yeah. She, you know why she's so funny? Because she's so serious about her job and get the job done and let's kill this person, let's murder this person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's good though. She's, she's, it's funny. Well, we yeah. have a clip. Take a look. Take a look. <laughs> Hazel. I know. If we don't get that case back soon, we're screwed. We wouldn't be if you just stuck your protocol and carried your briefcase with you. Well, maybe if you carried it once in a while, we wouldn't have this problem to begin with. My physical therapist isn't even covered by insurance. You don't hear me complaining. Oh, so this is you suffering in silence. Can you do this now? Fine. We need to get back to that family compound and find that junkie. Are you serious? We barely got out alive last time. Well, we can't go back until we know what we're doing. I will do some digging on the family while you go look for that junkie. Let's get our briefcase. <laughs> so much fun acting oh man i'm having a ball i love it it's something that I'm, i enjoy doing like singing you know it's i get to transfer all these uh, living emotions and all these living situations into something or someone that's not living and make it real you know so it's, it's another place it's another place for therapy for me you're also working with the recording academy on an initiative to make the music industry more inclusive to women, I was shocked at these stats. 98%, for example, of producers are men, 97% yeah. of engineers and mixers are men. Were you really shocked at them? A part of, part of me wasn't, really. but yeah. you've got a long way to go in that industry. My God. Listen, I had no idea. You just filled me in on what it.